I remember, yo, this is a funny story. My aunt had a pair of Timberland. She didn't want it anymore, so she gave it to me. What? Yes. So I went to school with it, and everybody was like, oh, Brie, we like your boots, we like your boots. I'm like, oh, thanks, guys. So, you know, throughout that year, I'm wearing my boots. You know, started getting a little, little beat up. And I'm like, mom, like, I'm gonna need another one just like these. My mom was like, okay, we're gonna go, boom. We went into the store. I'm like, mom, those are the boots. I'm like, yes. When I go to school tomorrow, everyone will be like, Debri, you got new boots. Nice. So the next day, I had my boots on. And then this girl looked at me and she was like, mm. what is that? And I was like, um, I don't know. These are, what you mean? Like, what are they? She was like, oh, that's fake. Oh. And then I was just like, what does she mean? Like, everyone liked my boots yesterday. That's when I realized that me and my mom went to Payless <laughs> <laughs> to get the boots. I learned names. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought it was just boots. Right. Like, oh, these are Timberlands. These are not just boots, these Timberlands. Right. I'm like, oh, y'all was. Okay, so y'all like my tree. So, Payless is a bad store? Are you Payless? Pay right. Like, I don't want to be remembered just for taking photos. I want to be remembered for using my voice to start a conversation to create change in my community. A dreamer. Talk to me about that, about voice and the dreamers. We're invisible, you know? As a Caribbean immigrant, you know, I'm from Trinidad. Growing up here, you just don't see, you know, Caribbean immigrant uh, representation. Okay, yes, you can walk through Flatbush, Church Avenue, mm -hmm. you know, the of West course. Indian <laughs> areas. <laughs> then of course, and you will see tons of people that, you know, have came here um, yeah. from different countries. But to me, how are these people that surround me create change for me growing up here. And I don't want people to look at me as, you know, how I dress and, you know, what they perceive me to be. Like, I'm naked right now, you know. Um, I'm doing something that not a lot of people will want to do. I didn't even want to do this. Um, I'll just be showing just raw photos of um, different dreamers. Um, and their families, their pets, you know, just kind of just showing them in the light that we all live every day, Yeah. you know, to kind of just stop this assumptions and these judgments that people, you know, have of immigrants. And there's no one face. There's no one face. One look, one story. No. no there's a million different stories. So how are you meeting the, these dreamers? A couple of them I know. Um, through like working, um, like past jobs, mm -hmm. um, and then the others is just some that I've searched for, like, because there's not, there's no easy way to find it. And when you do find someone, it's always that conversation of, do they even want to do it? And you can't, you can't like force someone to do this. Someone has to be ready, you know, not just, not just ready. They have to be ready to bear their soul. So you can't like, you can't fault someone if they're like, I don't think I'm ready right. to like be out there like that. I'm just, I'm just like, okay, cool. Come, you know, come to the show, you know, come hang out, whatever. That's what this is about. Voice, change, being loud and just being proud from, of where, you know, you were born. And also being proud to be an American, being proud to put into, you know, your culture into mm -hmm. America. It shouldn't be looked at as a bad thing. New York is a country in itself, like, you know, this is just like, to just contribute to that. Why should, you know, you be embarrassed? Right, or limited. Or limited. Yeah. You could go out there and teach folks. You talked about fashion, right? And like, I wanted us to connect to the stories behind these clothes. We so often discard things or throw them to the back of our closet because mm -hmm. we forget about the stories that are behind them. The hard work that we put in to get them. The people across country that, mm -hmm. that are, 
working for scent. Maybe it's just like out of mind. We're taught about recycling. We're taught about paper. We're taught mm -hmm. about uh, plastic. We're taught about water. Mm -hmm. we're, my, I could not leave the dinner table if mm -hmm. I had anything on my plate. For real, I could not waste food. We were talking about all these other things. Yeah. That, that affect the, the, the environment, but we forget to talk about textiles. Thinking about clothing and Trinidad, all I'm thinking about is my school uniform. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> what did that look like? I feel like I was in a school uniform 90% of my, like, my life. Not my life, you know, like, oh, you know, like, 90% of, of your life. 90% of, yeah. What did this look like? Oh, so the uniform in Trinidad was, brown it was a brown like uh dress and then you wear like a white shirt under mm -hmm. and you have to wear like brown socks brown shoes mm -hmm. <laughs> or, like, a brown ribbon in your hair or a white one it was real what did you wear to family gatherings or out going out to play i remember just my mom used to get random clothes i think she used to get um like barrels from Trin from America. I don't remember like going to the store and shopping. Like mm -hmm. I can never, I can't think of one time. I mean, I was you know ten and under, mm -hmm. but I don't remember like going to the store and like shopping for clothes. You know, on my mom coming home and saying, "Hey, I just bought this from the store." Like you know. So someone sending it. Yeah, to you, sending like a it. A friend mm -hmm. or. A family member, so it was it was always second hand. Yeah, I just thought it was just clothes from America. That's it. Like yo, like you know, it just make you feel cool and different. When did clothes start to ma matter? To right? matter. Ooh, <sighs> clothes started to matter in junior high. When yo, I can tell you a story. <laughs> She's actually my Facebook friend, Kezia Bernard. <laughs> Where you at, Kezia? She's my friend. I remember going into class one day, I had on this mint green. Don't ask why, it's just always mint green. I had on a <laughs> mint green, like, t-shirt. I think it had, I can't remember what it had on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, was it a shirt? It was a button down. It was something with, that was bright, had flowers. So if somebody else wore it, like, everybody gonna notice. Because right. it's, it's one of those, unique. like, one of a kind. shirts. Yeah. I'm like sitting in class, yeah, my shirt. I know y'all see my shirt. Like, you know? <laughs> All of a sudden, Kezia walks in in class and she had on the same shirt. And I was just like, bruh. And I remember like hearing like little voices like, oh, you're wearing it better than her though. And I'm just like, and that's when clothes really started to matter. And like shoes. <laughs> Mom, I can't go to school with these shoes. Right, not pay less anymore. Mm -mm. Pay more, mom. Please try to. We thrift and all that now. All so, day, all day. So what changed and what shifted and what changes? I I can look hella fly with a ten dollar outfit, <laughs> like you know. <laughs> so it's just <laughs> you have a shirt that you paid fifty dollars for. That you're like, I'm only gonna wear this shirt for special occasions, and you barely got special occasions. <laughs> so the shirt is just in the corner. And that's a whole fifty dollars. Much money we waste on material. Yeah. You know. And material that we're not even looking to reuse. Mm -hmm. We're we're buying them for a sole purpose. Whether it's like like you said, I quickly needed a black shirt, so let me just go to H and M. Yeah. I know I can. I used to work by Forever Twenty One. Okay, my floor was nothing but women. On any given Friday or Thursday, they were like, "Oh, let me just go run to Forever Twenty One real mm -hmm. quick to pick up something for the weekend, or to pick up something for real." Or there's that after work event. Let me yeah. just go quickly, mm -hmm. and we will not pick up that. That in the next year, guaranteed, fifty percent of those things that we bought so on those quick impulse, mm -hmm. we're not using. I think, I think that once we have these conversations and realize that we're connected to these things mm -hmm. that we wear we will be more mindful everyone needs to hear because i learned a lot from what you said through from yesterday to today mm -hmm. you know we have to go but i want you to make sure you get all your socials in and put all your information out about your exhibit um you can catch the dreamers photo exhibit um by me um february 22nd to the 25th at 145 front street <laughs> <laughs> at canvas gallery um Sweet 16 is in Dumbo, so um, come out, come, come out. out. Y'all have to be there to really experience 
this woman's story and so many others. Follow me at Visual Locks, V I S U A L L O C S. It should be. I like doing it. It should be down here. Hit mine up too. Positive <laughs> that obsession. And we out. <laughs>